Okay. Hello, and welcome to the Delphine School's second alumni webisode. Today we have Gal Ezra, who is from the class of 2010, and he has been acting since in a lot of TV commercials. And we also have Alexandra Ella, who is in um, part of the class of 1997 and is known for Mad Men, and, and she makes her living off acting. And then joining us later, who is just now driving home from an audition, is Dave O'Donnell, who is up from the class of 1992 and just recently wrapped up Christmas Under the Wraps. So the first question is, uh, tell us a little more about yourself and how you got where you are today. For who is that Never for? <laughs> All at once? Were like, yes. <laughs> huh? How about Alexander? Do you want to answer the question first? Sure. Um, well, I uh, basically straight out of high school, I moved down to Los Angeles and um, started in acting classes. And... Um, Pretty much right away, I started in the world of commercials, and so um, I it was kind of hard to get, sometimes, not for everybody, but it's kind of hard to get a really good commercial agent, and I sort of uh, researched who I really wanted, and found out all their needs and wants, and like what kind of photographer they like to use, and um, style they had, and... <laughs> I sort of like, at the time they were kind of edgy, and I like cut all my hair off and pierced my nose and got, uh, got headshots done with the photographer that they loved and sort of did everything that I knew they needed and wanted, and I got with that agency. Um, I've now been with that commercial agency for like uh, 15 years, maybe, and they're incredible, and that's mostly where I make my living is in commercials. Um, and then I just sort of, as time went on, branched off into television, and I just do whatever television I can get and um, commercials. Awesome. Okay, cool. And Gal, what about you? Well, for me, first of all, my internet might be a little bit choppy, so let me know if you want me to repeat certain things. Okay. But look, for me, at the beginning, I first, I've always had a bit of a passion for it, and while I was at Delphi, I really discovered it through theater and through working with Jordan and so forth, and it was amazing. And afterwards, I ended up in Cape Town sort of by mistake, which is where I am now, in Cape Town, South Africa. And at that time, I actually remember speaking with Alex. I don't know if you remember this, and I kind of got some advice on some things. I was planning on coming to L.A. Do you remember that? Not really, no. That's so funny. How long ago was that? Like four years ago. Okay. It was it was a while back, and we were discussing different things. I was a I was using my alumni network, which is very good. It's very true, and it was good. And uh, I got some advice and whatever. But I thought I would only be in Cape Town for like a month, and then I'd be going home. Uh, now I've been here for four years, and turns out that Cape Town is actually uh, a place that is full of. Uh, work in the acting industry and it's a fantastic place to begin an acting career. There's other places like that in the world such as Toronto and um, other places in the US that are is not just LA especially when you want to begin and Cape Town is one of those unique places that the industry is quite big. So I found myself here and um, because it's a much smaller it's not like there's plenty of fish in the sea like LA so the industry is a bit smaller, so it was easier to get an agent, easier to book some work, and to start building up a resume. And that's what I did, and it ended up being fantastic. So now I would say it would be a fantastic time for me to probably go to L.A. And I have friends that are in the acting industry here that are now moving to L.A. and actually finding some nice success there. So my path was a bit of a different one, and it started professionally in Cape Town, if that answers the question. Which I have to say is awesome because it gives you more wins, you know, like more... Exactly. In L.A., you're basically like losing 98% of the jobs you go out for or more than 98%. Yeah. And so it's, it can be very disheartening 
Um, so right. and it's, it's very hard. So that's I think that's awesome because it gives you like it gives you that resume and it gives you that confidence. And it's great. Absolutely. So for someone who has the opportunity to do that, let's say you want to start out, and if you have the the means to travel a little bit and to find and to go to a place that has an acting industry that is not huge that you kind of want to start off with, and I, there are a ton of Americans that come here, for example, and people from all over the world that come to live here for like six months, get a few jobs under their belt, get some experience, and then they go to LA. It's a, it's a possible path that people can consider if they're starting out. Awesome. Cool. And the next question is, what would give advice to a senior at Delphi and what they should focus on for their last year at Delphi? That's a last year. Wait, what to <laughs> focus on, on the last year at Delphi? Yeah, your senior year. For the path, if they want to go into performing arts, acting. Oh, first of all, definitely be in choir. Definitely participate in every single play. Uh, take on as much as you can in terms of like practical stuff, like student council and that sort of thing, because your ability to deal with people is huge in the acting world. So the more you can take on with like interacting and leadership and that sort of thing, aside from the normal courses and studies, I think that that's a tool that you can take with you, not only for acting, but the abilities that Delphians get with communication and how to deal with people, that's uh, invaluable. So as much of that as you can. That's my, my I first still impression. I 110% agree with Gal because it's um, very, that is, like, you can't be shy. You have to be tough. You have to, like, be a go-getter. You have to be able to, um, you're, like, directing your own career. Like, when you're, when you're a big star, you can have a whole team of people underneath you working for you. But when you're by yourself, you're doing marketing, you're doing, you know, all the promotion, you're, you're also doing the art. Like, you're doing every single part of the whole job. So it takes a lot of know-how in all of those, those areas and the willingness to confront, go out there, talk to people, communicate, be there. I mean, I think... The hardest thing about acting is being willing to put yourself out there all the time. Like, you know, cut yourself open and put yourself out there, heart open to everybody. And so the more things that you can do to um, put yourself out into the community, to other people, in art projects you do, the better. Cool. Great. So the next question is, if you could do over your Delphi education, what would you have changed? Oh, I, well, I always wish I went to Delphi now. Of course, I think everybody wishes they were a teenager again sometimes. But um, I, I think the biggest issue is diversifying. Like, I'm only an actor for the most part. I do write a little bit, but I'm mostly an actor. And in this world of, like, everyone's creating things on YouTube, um, they're diverse. Like people can shoot, like on cameras. They know how to use cameras. They know how to write and um, and produce and like just creating their own things. I know a lot of people are doing that now at the school, doing the video. I don't know what you call the class, but you know, creating videos that are amazing. I've seen a whole bunch of them. I think that is. Yeah. Um, I would just focus on all those things that are actually more specific to what you would actually be doing these days in acting. Yeah, I agree with that. I I would have done, uh, few, I would have done more AV, a little bit more AV, which is I think the class that you're referring to, Alex, which is like, uh, just in general, maybe not even as a class. I just would have been more involved with the camera and learned a bit more of the. Delphi has resources of like editing softwares and things like that, which I never learned enough. I would have done a little bit more computer work and kind of learned how to like build myself a website and that kind of stuff, which I wish. I would have made use of. But what I can say is that one thing that I did in my Delphi time that I really would recommend for everyone to do is to take on as much as possible. And that's something that I would never change. I think I did more than like 80% of the people. I got involved with every trip, every class I could, every seminar, 
every quite course. Okay, I didn't add on every single course, but I added on as much as I could, and I kind of never said no to opportunities. So like, sure, I'll I'll be in that play, and I'll be in the choir, and I'll help direct it, and I'll do that course, and I'll be on student council, and then 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 then. And I think that that's something that you should always do and take it with fun and and enjoy it all and it all pays off because when you take it less seriously, things kind of happen in a cool way. And that's what I would definitely recommend for people to do. Awesome. And what would you say about higher education like college for people who want to do acting? Uh, I I am not in, at all a proponent of that. Um, but that just could be from my studies post Delphi where I would be in acting class and somebody would come from university and be like, oh, I studied four years of theater. And they, I always felt like the teachers had to, re, to undo everything they, they learned in, uh, in school and reteach them um, in like a different way. So I, I, that's just like from a separate source, negativity that I always experienced in class from people like, ugh, what a waste going to college. But... I feel like that's completely not the case if you're doing any kind of musical, uh, you know, some arts college where you're doing music and dance and acting or something like that. I think that's vital, obviously. But um, if you're just acting, I honestly would just say jump into it and get into a great class. Yes. The younger you I'm, are, the better. Uh, yeah. I, I, I believe in that as well. I think that business and acting are things that you learn. For, okay, the acting world is also business, just to be clear here. But when you are doing that, that's stuff that you learn from doing it in life. If you want to go and become a much more technical artist, like what Alex said with uh, you know music and so forth, or if you want to go and become a lawyer, then you obviously need to go to college. But your time spent out in the real world is much more valuable than time spent in the classroom. And in the classroom, Delphi is fantastic because it teaches you use workable, usable material. In the other schools, people learn so much nonsense that it just affects them negatively, and they come and everything is so serious, and acting is a, it's just so, you know, it, they go like too technical, and it's weird, and it just is not an art, and it's not creative anymore. So. That being said, doing workshops and like little classes are fantastic. But a full like stuck in the classroom ivory tower uh, college thing, I I think it's not as as workable in my opinion. Okay, cool. And what about like people who deal with agents that are scamming you, like wanting to get you for money? And what should they do about that? Well, first of all, you should never be paying anybody up front. For to be to to represent you, I see that's like definitely shady. Any sorry, hold on one second. Um, any my baby's getting into trouble. Um, any um, yeah. The, if you have a, an agent or a manager, they take a percentage of your earnings. They do not. Um, you do not have to pay them ahead of time just to to um, represent you. So. I don't know. That's sort of like a you got to get wise to that stuff and um, get it, it. The best thing I think is to get a network of, of people who you, who are doing this business and that things you can run run things by people. It's very lonely business. It's, it can be very very lonely. I, I go many t many months where I'm just sort of on my own working on my my craft, doing my thing because you're like you're auditioning, you're going out there and you're putting yourself out there. But if you don't have a group that you can kind of bounce things off of and get support from, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult. So I just think, um, yes, it's, there's probably many different ways people can get scammed. So if you're worried about it, ask somebody who is, um, you know, more, knows more than you do, you know, get, get into, get involved with more people who can give you advice. And now it's yeah, time for awesome. open questions. So introduce yourself before you ask your question, and make sure you unmute yourself too, so we can hear you. What was the first question? Let's see. I think they're on mute. No one has a question. 
<laughs> That's either very good or very bad. Come on, guys. <laughs> I have a question. There. My, my, my first question is, uh, how okay, do you get known yourself. when you're first starting? I like to whom? To casting like directors? To, what? Yeah. Um, well, I'll answer for Los Angeles since I know nothing about Cape Town. Um, yeah. Is that what you said, Cape Town? Is that right? Yeah, Cape Town. I'll, I'll tell you all about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for Los Angeles, um, I think the way that people kind of now are doing it, it, it changes. The whole uh, business is changing a lot. But right now, they, they're casting directors that offer casting director workshops, and you have to pay for them. And it's like 40 bucks. And then you like meet a casting director, you do a scene for them, and then supposedly they keep your headshot and think about you for upcoming uh, TV shows or movies that they cast. Um, That's cool. A lot of people are uh, divided about how to feel about casting director workshops. They don't want to have to like sink in a whole bunch of money to meet people. However, my experience is it's sort of what you have to do right now. Unless you're the guy that always hangs out at all the spots where a cast and directors hang, and you are super awesome and friendly with everyone, and everyone loves you, like that's that's a way. Be social, but otherwise, it's just, just a matter of like meeting people, making a connection, and trying to build off of that. Yeah, yeah, because I see all those people in like Disney for like uh, like seven or eight, and like getting started, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I don't. I couldn't tell you how their parents like got them seen. I don't know. I'll see. I'll tell you when I get this guy on TV. <clears throat> but um, it's just you know you guys do condition formulas, non-existent. Say again. You do condition formulas. Yeah. So you know the condition of non-existence where you yeah. make, make a communication line. Make, yeah. another one, make another one. That's that's like that's the simplicity of what you have to do, and um, and then be really good. So you have to be personable. People have to love you. They want to have to be around you, and then you have to be a good actor. So I very much suggest a serious acting class that really kicks your butt. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, and then it's yeah. and then it's connections, and then like I I got the show Mad Men. From like one casting director that I became friends with, who was best friends with the casting director of Mad Men, he came to see a play I did, and he was like, "Oh, I told my best friend about you," and then she called me in for Mad Men. And if I hadn't been friends with that guy, I would never have gotten the audition that got me that show. So it's all connections, and it's all like who you meet and how, what an impression you make on them when you meet. It's it takes a lot of tact because you can't be too pushy, but you have to be like full of energy and life and and um, so that you attract other people. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a balance of feeling. You need to feel like who's in front of you, just like any conversation, and that's how you know should I you know put put a little more force into it? Should I back off a little like in this relationship? But you know, when I first got to Cape Town, from this perspective, like let's say you wanted to start acting and take an approach like I did, which most people are not going to do, but it's it's a workable way without a doubt. In Cape Town, I arrived and I found a full list of agencies and the people that I should be in touch with here, and I sent them information about me. And because it's a smaller place, they took me a lot more seriously, especially because I was foreign to Cape Town. And I, you know, I can do a great American accent and blah 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 blah, and that was attractive to them. And it was something that this area didn't have. So to me, it was an easy foot in the door right off the bat. And so that's one way that I could immediately go and establish myself and start. Now I have a friend who, in Cape Town, is extremely, does extremely well, and now he's just gone to LA and paid quite a bit of money for this high-end networking week. And um, he happens to have an incredible look and be very, very talented. So during this networking week, there were only about 14 people, and out of that, he was selected, and he's now signed with like a few of the top age, like a top manager there. I don't know exactly the details, but he's just got his foot majorly into the door in LA, and I believe he'll do very well. Um, but so he went through the route of like paying, 
but he was talented and came from a background here with a strong resume. So it's a bit of a balance. For like, that's paying for a specific like um, weekend of networking. That's not paying. That, that's to, to be separated from like having to pay a manager to represent you. Just to make be clear. Right. Exactly. Ne yeah. Never pay up front. As you said earlier, that ten percent thing or a certain percentage that they take. It shouldn't be an upfront payment to an agent. That's all. That's a scam. If they're telling you upfront payment, this was more of a networking opportunity, and out of that, through face-to-face -face meetings, he signed on with an agent at no cost. They simply will get a percent when he books work. And I would say if you're interested in theater over television, because obviously I, I don't primarily do theater, um, LA is probably not the place for you. I would rather go to like Chicago or New York if I was into theater. Yeah. Cool. So does anyone else have any more questions? I have a question. Your favorite role that you've played so far, or commercial you've done? Um. Wow, God, that's a. I guess my favorite commercial I ever did was a Jimmy Dean commercial where I was like a ten foot rainbow. That was really fun. <laughs> um. And then um, I did a little role on this show called The New Adventures of Old Christine, which was a Julia Louis-Dreyfus show for many years, where I was like a really ditzy, clumsy hairdresser. And I think that was my favorite, my favorite fun role. On Mad Men, it's like a great show, but my character wasn't particularly exciting to play. So. <laughs> great. And what about you, Gal? Uh, for me, I did this, uh, when I first got here, I did this small-ish part in, uh, in a play, I mean, not a play, a TV show called The Great British Story, uh, which was obviously for the UK, and it was all about their history and so forth. So I played this, like, 1700s uh, person that worked at, it was like a store clerk type thing, and I was dealing with, like, I don't know, like, Thomas Jefferson was there, and it was, it was like this whole thing, and like a wig and that kind of stuff. So that was fun. And then I've, I keep getting commercials where I'm a soldier over and over again. So I've been like a sailor. I've been on just a regular soldier. So uh, that kind of stuff is always fun and like yeah, good stuff. Cool. So um, I would just say to you guys to like it's. Uh, it's really, really fun and really, really hard and really, really crazy to be an actor in Los Angeles, at least. And um, yes, anywhere. Yes. So you need to have the guts and the thick skin and the real determined drive to do it. And uh, and then you need a support system of people around you when you go. Oh, I can't do it anymore. I got you rejected one more time. I can't take it. You know, or, or like I've gone through those times where it's like I haven't booked. You know, like this one ch girl keeps booking the commercials I am like about to book. You know, like this one girl, and I'm like, oh, you know, and you have to like be able to deal with your own emotions and like get above them and 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 uh, per persist. And if you do, it's it's so fun. It's so so fun, and it's so fun to to get the job and be on the set, and be working with the director, and you know, it's it's a total blast. Um, so it's all worth it, but I just want to say, like, you gotta, you gotta be ready, and you gotta really want it. And if you're not sure, you know, go be an accountant. <laughs> okay, great. I think David has now joined. Hello, David. Hello. Can you hear Hi, us? Hi, everybody. Right? Hello. Right. Say that again. Can you hear us all right? I can. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yes, I'm here live, reporting from Glendale, California. <laughs> <laughs> So, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm a Scorpio. I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, about my sort of acting history, time in Los Angeles. Yes. Okay, well, uh, well, first of all, for everybody who's there, I graduated from Delphi in 1992, so probably before you were born. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but, um... um I started acting in Los Angeles in 1993. I got a commercial for Gatorade because I was a soccer player. Everybody still hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. 
Um, and I just started doing commercials uh, and uh, decided I should probably learn what I was doing because I didn't know what I was doing really. And I started taking acting class and um, I've been working in Hollywood as an actor for 21 years now. And I've done a lot of stuff, I've done a lot of movies, I've done a lot of TV, a lot of commercials, theater. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much it. And now I have a, uh, and now I have a, I act, and I also have a production company. We do online content, and um, yeah, pretty much it. Cool. And Alex and Gal already answered the question, but what advice would you give to a senior at Delphi who is about to go into the career of acting? Uh, I would say. Um, I think I heard you guys talking about college a little bit. Um, you know, there's differing opinions on college. You know, like my my wife went to UCLA. They have a great theater program, and she learned a lot of stuff there. Uh, and I think Alex was saying that you need like a group that kind of uh, that you can you know that can be your group that can be your sort of stable datum, for lack of a better word, uh, so that you can always you know work on material with them and everything. And she really found that in college. Uh, at UCLA, and she got to do. She didn't just. She wasn't just an actor. You know, she did sets, and she ran shows, and she called shows, which is when you're, uh, you know, back running the lights for a show. And I think it's important for actors to learn all the jobs that, whether it's in theater or shooting, because when you know what art department does and when you know what a PA does and when you know what a producer and a director do, it makes your job as an actor more clear cut. So I think that's really important. But that said, my experience uh, was I, I found an acting class called the Beverly Hills Playhouse that was at the time really the premier class in Los Angeles to go to. And I learned that was my college and I learned the basics of acting and how to you know be on stage and how to inhabit a character and you know uh, you know human behavior and studying people and all that stuff. So um, I would say for a senior that really wants to do this job, <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi Miko, uh, he's so cute. Uh, I would say uh, find an acting class that's really that 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 really nurtures your talent and ability. And that isn't there to evaluate or you know break you down to build you back up. That kind of crap is just like no new actor needs that stuff. And in my opinion, there's a place um, in LA uh, called the the Acting Center, which is very. It's not about evaluation at all. You learn the basics of acting, and you learn how to behaviors of a character, how to inhabit a character, all the basic things that you need to learn as an actor. Um, and I think that's very valuable to just develop your own specific talent and ability before somebody goes and says, that was terrible, who are you talking to? Uh, you have to be more specific about this, that, and the other thing. You know, just give the actor a chance and, and let them you know, sort of find out who they are first. So I, I would say find a really good class. It's a good stable class for them. Um, uh, yeah. And um, and just learn everything you can about the business. If you can intern okay, awesome. places, yeah, I... if you can, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Go Great. Ahead. I actually went to the acting center. We met on business trip like four years ago, and you're like, you should. You should oh, go I there. know. I remember. Then, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, if you could change anything about your Delphi education, what would that be? Um, I would have been an art major. I I was uh. I was a business major uh, at Delphi, and I would have just done as much, you know, because they didn't have a film department at Delphi when I was there either, and I would have learned everything I could learn about cameras and about film. I would have taken photography classes. I would have jumped into the theater as much as I could. I was, I was busy being a jock. I was playing sports all the time, so I didn't get a chance to, like, really go and do uh, the theater stuff other than skit night, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, just I would have just taken every like music. I don't know if you guys know this, but very often musicians make great actors because they have a stage presence and are are comfortable in front of people. I would have taken like debate 
I would have done everything I could to make myself comfortable in front of an audience and a better communicator. I would have taken major voice lessons. I would have done that all the time, honestly. Um, so just anything I could to dive into the arts and learn all about it, that's what I would have done. Okay. Okay. Is there any, any last questions from the students? I just see fro I see a lot of frozen faces. <laughs> okay, there we go. I do have a question. Um, what would you suggest for a sports player to like? I'm a, I love sports. I want to go pro in soccer, but at the same time, I want to be working in commercials and be working on that side. Do you have any suggestions for me? In, in terms of what would you do? In terms in of getting, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, well, I would do what I just said, um, and I would. Uh, I, I also play a lot of soccer, so I know a lot about that. Um, but um, it's very important. Something that something that I developed because I was such a jock was. You, you know what jock walk is? You ever heard? Have you ever seen that on anybody? Jog walk no. is that kind of thing where they kind of like, you know, they kind of walk like this. It's kind of tight. And honestly, you're going to laugh, but I think that if I could have done anything to offset that, I would have taken dance classes. Lots and lots and lots of dance classes because athletes tend to be really tight. Their muscles are tight and stretch a ton. And I would just, you know, if you can... Make time for theater as well. If there's any way to fit that in as well as your sports, uh, and like I said, voice and anything that you can do to find out more about the arts, because any kind of art that you do uh, informs your acting. I think makes you a better actor. I think the more you know about My Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. You know, and, and the more you learn about the Renaissance and all that stuff and about great jazz musicians and the more documentaries you can see, the better actor you're going to be. That's what I think. And I think that a lot of men don't want to do uh, dance classes. And, um, you know, there's not really dance offered, I don't think, at Delphi. But, like, yoga. Um, and, sure. um, and then when you are not at Delphi anymore, getting into dance classes, and it, if you, I don't know if you are, do that at all, but it's like a lot of men, actors I see, like need, really need to loosen up. Totally. Like they're too self-conscious in their bodies, and like, or there's, there's certain kinds of movement classes you can do specifically for actors. Yeah. But it's really important, and that also like being willing to do that, put yourself out there. So it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Okay. Absolutely. Thank and you. I just wanted to say one other thing is that if you look at, like, my favorite actors, like, two guys I can point out are Marlon Brando and, uh, well, there's also Steve McQueen, but um, uh, Paul Newman were very stage trained and both of them took lots of dance. And they were dudes, you know, they were dudes, but they knew how to move. And I think that's so important for an actor. Yeah. Okay. Any final words of wisdom before we end off? Say that again? Is there any last words you'd like to give before we end off? I want to say one thing. Watch a lot of movies, and not like a lot of cheeseburger movies like Spider-Man 2. Watch like, watch like good old movies. You know, watch like Streetcar Named Desire. Watch like, uh, you know, if you just if you just look at like the all the best pictures from like 1939 on, like Casablanca, things like that, you can learn so much from watching that stuff. And that's something that I wish I would have done. That was, I, I think, the first thing that happened when I came to LA. I was given a list, and um, I went to the Beverly Hills Playhouse as well. They gave me a list of movies that are like must watch. I yes. never seen any of them practically. Maybe I'd seen a few. And I went through it and I watched them, and it's yeah, it's an incredible basis, uh, you know, for you to see like amazing actors. So true. 
Totally. Yeah, that's very cool. That's a great point. And the one other thing I want to add on a slightly different note is one thing that I do is I run a business on the side. And that's something that's very uh, helpful. And a lot of my friends who are actors feel that running a business is limiting in some way to their acting career or something like that. And I disagree with that. I think that running an, a side business uh, puts you in a space where, especially if it's your own business, that you're flexible to do your acting and you can support yourself and you never get desperate for work and you just, you can sort of, you learn other business attributes which are important for your life uh, and which reflect on your acting career. So do that, don't limit yourself. Take on as much as you can, push the passion of your acting and, uh, and do more if you've also had that desire, which I personally did. So, yeah. True. Absolutely. I had lots of other jobs, and I wish I had my own company before I was able to support myself acting. Well, thank you very much. I think the students, including myself, very much appreciated your advice, and I know that there will be students watching this after this is live because it will be available on YouTube. There will be a link sent out. And thank you again right. very, very much. I really appreciate it. And this is it. Yes.